we just got done with a um, presentation from the fire chief at the city council meeting for a life-saving award that we got for um, a rescue that we had a week ago. On January 3rd, 2024, at about 10 p.m., crews were dispatched for a water rescue at Walnut Creek Lake. Female victim was in the water with her three dogs. But got over to the lake, uh, went to the boat dock area, which is where their initial report was that they were located. Did not locate them at the boat dock area, so kind of started searching. Um, with the help of uh, is either uh, Papillion PD or Sarpy County Sheriff, they located where she was, which is about 200 yards south of the boat dock. Engine two crews found the female victim. She was barely hanging onto a tree branch in the water. The female victim was unable to self-rescue due to the temperature of the water that was draining her strength and being unable to negotiate the ice shelf. Assumptions are five or 10 minutes had happened before we arrived there and then it was five to seven minutes probably by the time we got to her and got her out. Once we located where she was, it was just a matter of minutes for us to, to get the rescue and get her out of the water. Just so you're not... This time of year in general, even if it was a water rescue or an ice rescue, which is what it turned into being, um, we have um, their must Mustang rescue suits um, and they're actually like a dry suit. So they keep cold water away from our skin, away from our body. So the difference between a dry suit and a wetsuit, wetsuit kind of gets the water on your next to your body and then dry suits just keep it completely away. Um, so really it's pretty, I'll, I'll call it minimum equipment for us. It's a couple of guys in, in those Mustang suits and then um, a rope with a, it's kind of a sling that we can put around them that's attached to the rope. And then we use that to pull both the rescuer and the victim back in. You know, we wanna get the suits on in 60 seconds or less. Um, if we're um, traveling and for instance, my backseat firefighter would be putting, starting to put his suit on, on the way to the call. So he's ready as he gets there. I get out, try and locate where the victim is. I put on a secondary suit. So the firefighter that rides with me is kind of my primary rescuer and then I'm his backup rescuer. We try to get out actually on ice at least once during the winter season for training purposes. Um, we have some tabletop or like um, desktop type of training stuff, materials that we review um, usually several times during the season. I've been on for uh, about 15 and a half years and we've done it every year that I've been here. Our techniques and our equipment have evolved a little bit over the years. We used to have kind of a big, more of a pontoon sled rowboat thing that we used. And just over time, we um, that was a bigger piece of equipment, a little bit clunkier, a little more labor intensive to get people out and on the water. And um, the method we use now with the suit and the rope is just a lot more efficient and it lets, allows us to affect that rescue in minutes um, once we get on location. So it just makes it a lot quicker, a lot more streamlined for us. So this is the first ice rescue with an actual victim in the water that I've been on. It doesn't happen a lot. We get called a few times a year, a handful of times, um, where somebody is in the water and then maybe out by the time we get there or ice fishermen that are out that somebody else is in the area that helps get them out, you know, um, in the amount of time it takes us to get there. So fairly unique for us that, that we were actually able to get there and, and effect a rescue in this instance. So if you do find yourself in that situation, obviously trying to stay above the water as, as long as you can. Don't go out and rescue the dog if, if you know, or the, or the pets if, if they're um, out there, you know, by themselves. Um, they'll come in on their own or, or we can come out and get them for you. Try to stay above water as long as you can. Hold on, yell, make noise flash a light if you have something like that. Just try to get anybody's attention you can around there. Trying to get yourself up over the ledge of the ice and stay in as low and as spread out as you can to try to get yourself towards the edge is always recommended as well. Taking uh, precautions with your electronic devices so that you might be able to use them even if they've been dunked in the water, like a waterproof case or something like that would be a good idea if you're planning to go out, let's say ice fishing or something. If you're going to be out there, especially after hours, after dark, make sure you have somebody else with you. In this instance, um, there was another individual out at the park with, with the victim. She was the one who was actually able to make the phone call to 911, so it sped that process up. Had the gal um, been out there by herself, um, you know, it might have been a completely different story for us if she'd have even been able to call or if we'd been going out there the next day for a recovery instead of a, um, a rescue. So um, that could change the situation a lot as well. Do you remember taking care of safety?